advised. Hey everyone, this video is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering you a free audiobook with a 30-day free trial membership. All you need to do is go to audibletrial.com forward slash bgunlocked. The link is in the description below, and now enjoy the video. Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Games Unlocked, and today I'm doing a, uh interesting topic, which is basically going to be my thoughts on the Kickstarter game that I just backed called Alter Quest, which is a 1-4 to player game designed by Adam and Brady Sadler. This is their Kickstarter page, uh, and it seems, and here's the thing about this game, is it seems like it's going to be a modular deck kind of system, uh, one that basically puts the twist on, on fantasy and gothic horror. So uh, I thought it was going to be super interesting and I wanted to share it with you, so let's go ahead and take a look at the page. Obviously you can see that I am a backer uh, pledged for uh, 109, but uh, we'll talk about my, my feelings on uh, the Kickstarter page and the Kickstarter as a whole, but first let's watch the, the introduction video. Ooh yeah, let's make that big. Blacklist Games. A Riddica's past yeah. is dark and terrible. A land cursed by the last survivor of the Zezix Empire. The Doomchild, Sarah, invited ruin wherever she roamed, and found a home in Aridica long ago. Drawn to the dark power she found there that prevented the land from flourishing like the rest of Eastany. It was there that Sarah reigned until the United Peoples of Eastany defeated her undead armies. But the heroes of that age could not truly defeat the Doom Child, for she was brought to this world through dark magic and existed between both life and death. So she was bound to the land she loved, never to awaken again. She became a forgotten legend until the altars emerged. These corrupted runes that hold the greatest powers in the world have drawn from the shadows the dark and nefarious creatures that yearn for power. But the altars have also drawn heroes to a desperate need of rescuing. Alter Quest is a cooperative game of fantasy adventure for one to four players, designed by Adam and Brady Sadler. Alter Quest utilizes the modular deck system introduced in Street Masters and Brook City to create. So, real quick, the uh, I guess I can talk a little bit about that. That definitely has a lot of Hero Quest vibes. I almost said Hero Escape. Uh, Hero Quest vibes, where basically the rooms were just different squares on the board, um, and it. And it was filled with 3D terrain. And what's crazy about the uh, the old school games, like in the 90s and even the early 2000s, were they they did stuff like this. Normally, now games will come out with you know cardboard for desks and stuff like that. And then you have to pay extra or back it on Kickstarter, hooray, to uh, get the 3D terrain. But it's 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 interesting that uh, earlier games. I, I believe it was due to plastic prices just skyrocketed. Um, but yeah, uh, this game is obviously fantasy, so a genre that I absolutely love. If you watched my top 10 fantasy and top 10 sci-fi, uh, I definitely lean more towards the fantasy. And I don't know why. Um, it's just always, it's just that air of, of uh, mysticism that uh, just always intrigues me. But yeah, it, uh, it just, uh, the 3D train will just always make things look, look better. Uh, and then especially if you paint them. But Adam and Brady Sadler, yeah, they're the ones who, who did Brook City, Street Masters, and Heroes of Terranoth. Um, and this is their newest game. And since it's fantasy and gothic horror, uh, I both love both those genres. So, let's continue. Utilizes the modular deck system introduced in Street Masters and Brook City to create a brand new experience of heroism and adventure. Players take on the roles of daring heroes venturing into the dark lands of Aridica, playing by gothic horrors and unstable magic. Each hero has a unique deck of cards that can be upgraded over the course of their adventure. These hero decks can be combined with different quest decks, villain decks, and threat decks to create truly unique games each time, or let your chosen heroes embark on a story to play through a woven narrative that combines decks for you. However you choose to play, Alter Quest delivers engaging gameplay, highly detailed miniatures, immersive scenery, 
and even more modularity than fans of the modular deck system have come to expect. Alter Quest. No. <laughs> you think he was gonna say something else after that? Uh, Alter Quest. D get the altars or something like that, but he uh, he didn't. So uh, the yeah. So you have the the altars and then the not the altars. What the modular decks, which is what intrigues me so much about this game, is that typically it's like here's your event deck, here's your enemy. You know, just one card. Um, sometimes they'll have a unique deck, and then here's your deck, and then go on. Uh, it's what intrigues me is the fact that you can mix and match, and then probably play the same scenario over and over, but have it play completely different. Um, so let's go down and take a look at it. So there's stretch goals that they have uh, that they have unlocked, and obviously they made their goal uh, well over their goal. Uh, so you have miniature traps, and these these three D minis are going to be awesome. Like they're, they're like miniature traps, like those just look cool. Um, then you have a new character, the cut purse, crates feature, feeding trough, uh, the highwayman has been unlocked. And uh, the thing about fantasy games is they typically fall into the trope of okay, here's your elf, here's your warrior, kind of like your defenders of well, defenders of the realm had unique ones too. But uh, this seems to be like their own crafted world. Um, instead of just your generic fantasy, which at this point you have to make unique. Um, and speaking of which, like, so let's talk about their video real quick. They did a pretty good job of kind of doing both. What a lot of Kickstarters will do is they'll only do the backstory. And then it's like, yeah, the backstory is neat, and that's your theming, but how does the game play? Because it's like you can have all the neat, you know, theme and lore you want, but if your game plays like shit, then you just wasted a really good theme. Uh, so they did a really good job at not just doing this. Now, sometimes people people will go for both. You know, they'll they'll go for you know the theme, and then uh, and then they'll be like, oh, okay, well, I'll read about it. But they did a good job at doing both. Here's what the game is about, and here's how the game is played generally. And sometimes I really like the videos that show how you kind of play. They do a very quick synopsis of how you play, but they did a pretty good job. Um, let me go ahead and read the backstory of what they actually sent me, uh, in case you didn't get it uh, in the in the video. But the ruined lands of uh, Aridica have a dark past, cursed by the Doom Child, <laughs> which makes me think of a never-ending story. Moon Child! God, that movie's awful. Who bound herself beneath the soil to plunge the world above into an age plagued by demons and undead? Her dark curse empowered the fiends that hid from civilization, drawing them out to claim the dominance over the races they deemed weaker. The Doom Child's power manifested into powerful stones called altars that burst forth from the earth to empower her servants. Now, true heroes must arise to cleanse these altars and remove the stain of corruption before the Doom Child awakens. Um, so yeah, Altar Quest puts players in the roles of powerful heroes seeking to drive the forces of darkness away from the altars that corrupt the world. Neat. Anyway, so I just wanted to throw that out there. It sounds like it's, you know, because I know the monsters have their own unique names. Um, the heroes will probably, I hope it's not just like cut first. I hope they have actual names. Um, and then you have the actual campaign that they're going to have. So uh, Feeding Trough, Highwaymen, Altar of Greed uh, is another miniature. The Mercenary, uh, Banner of Morn. So yeah, Morn, hey, what's that? The Outlaws Threat Deck, Steel Maw, the Pillaging the, the Vault Quest Deck, Whip, uh, the Prisoner, ooh, Morgan, Pirate, seems like a pirate, a new villain rises, oh, it doesn't say, um, but it looks like they have a card divider, all these have card dividers, that's really cool, I like dividers in games, Queen Valerie, neat, that's a miniature, that's not an actual upgrade, Queen Valerie's token from the base game to a miniature, okay. Van Geyser looks like a... Oh, that's a new hero. That's cool. An actual horse. Huh. I don't think I've seen a horse like... That's neat. Uh, new altar dice. Additional set of altar dice with different colored symbols on each side. Uh, that's really cool because in the picture... Let's see if I can find it whenever they show the map. 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 Tiny Gothic Horror. I'm like, cool. Cool. It tracks. No, I'm not gonna be able to find it. Whatever. Maybe, maybe there's a picture later on. Oh well. Um, 
And then you have the Poxoid Rummager. It looks like that's a miniature that you can deal with. So what do they have left? They have Garbage Heap feature and then Hero Ally cards. Um, so it looks like you can get allies. And then I kind of already read that. Oh, there's, there's the map. Perfect. Uh, so they have these dice, these kind of marble uh, clear dice, which still look really, really good, but it requires almost you to recognize what the symbols are, and you still need to do that a little bit, but I like this black granite or black marble with the colored. I like this a lot better than than what they have here, even though these are still really nice. Um, but yeah, at a glance, like the board, it's like, wow, it's just squares. I mean, there's no terrain, there's no nothing, but with the 3D stuff, I think that that will make it neat. And then this is going to be one of those games where the, all the focus is going to be on your decks and on your cards and then the lore that these cards bring. Similar to Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven, from a glance, looks like utter garbage. Like, there's, there's, like, you might as well have just made one clear coat for the boards uh, of color, and that's pretty much what they did. But the gameplay is just so good. The theme is so good. The world that they built is so good that I think is going to be the same here. And then obviously here's these painted, these doors that open that are painted, the chests and all that. That just make this game pop, similar to what HeroQuest did. Then they have, here's the quest tier. So here's here's my one complaint about, about this Kickstarter, is that there is only one pledge that you can do. And it is one for 109. I mean, you get the game, you get the Kickstarter exclusive, uh, expansion, and all unlock stretch goals, which is fine. Um, but I personally think they should have, and I guarantee this is 109 because of the plastic, because of uh, the, the 3D terrain that they're going to have. Um, but it would have been nice to have maybe a cheaper one just to get the game. It's like, well, I don't want the expansion, or I don't want the stretch goals or whatever. You just get the base game, which I believe every Kickstarter always gives the stretch goals. But 109 might be, I mean, they made their goal so great. That's awesome. Uh, but they could even get even more if they had different tiers. Uh, which which they don't. But the four heroes that you get is Quella, Marine, Duval, Rowan, Laughlin, and Cedrin Highmore. Uh, it kind of looks like a cleric, a hobbit, probably a roguish, your typical warrior, and probably some type of sorcerer. Um, and then you're going to get the the frocks. It looks like they're frogs. Frocks raiders, bog mancers, and muck slingers. Uh, and they're gonna obviously everything in this game is gonna have their own unique name, which I think is still pretty cool if you can sell it. Because there's a lot of like movies that come out that have they're like, oh no, it's it's runners like the zombies. Every zombie thing tries to name name them different, and it's like just just stop. Uh, Ragot cannibals, Raglan blooders, Raglan burners. You have some gargoyles, cr uh, crimson couriers, and feral mothers. Neat. Then the three villains, Gert, Balk, Balks, the Belch Lord, gross, and Wynora Morn. Does she have a baby? No. Yeah, she has to have a baby. Huh. So so you have three villains. Did they even, are, did any stretch goals add? I think it added one new villain. One more villain. And then added a quest deck and then a threat deck. Huh. I thought they added another another villain. No, I guess not. See, that'd be nice if you added, um, yeah, looks like they didn't add any more, any more villains. So more villains would be neat, and I know the modular thing is going to be able to mix and match and make it play different, but more villains is always nice. 16 doors, 16 3D doors, and then here are their 7 features. You've got a weapon rack, uh, and these all probably are going to look amazing, um, and I think that's going to be... Really, really neat. A bookcase, a mystical mirror, lock chest, fungal patch, alchemy desk, and blessed fountain. That blessed fa fountain looks really, really cool. So yeah, uh, these plastic terrain is, is pretty much what's hiking up the price. One altar looks really neat. And then yeah, the altar dice and then the hero dice. And the hero dice are basically the rolls for successes. And the helmet, which is really, it's like their focus or something like that. And it uh, if you've ever played Mansions of Madness and you spend the clues to turn them into successes, that's what Focus does. Um, and then these Altar Dice are like the elements that you can use to boost your own powers. Then you have, yeah, Modular Deck, Decks and Cards, Four Hero Decks, Threat Decks, Three Villain Decks, Quest Decks, Altar Cards, Feature Cards. So all these basically are going to have a different combination, a modular combination that's going to make the scenario completely feel different. Or... Card dividers, yay. Plastic rings, also yay. Uh, or you follow their campaign, which would be, uh, which would kind of build it for you. 
bunch of tokens, the game board, which is what it is. I mean, it's still it's still gonna feel cool. It's gonna feel like a unique dungeon. Then there's the Call of the Lumen. This is why this is one of the reasons actually why I backed it. Uh, besides the fact it sounded really cool. The Call of the Lun uh, not Lumen, Lunarin, uh, was designed by Isaac Childers of Gloomhaven, and Gloomhaven is one of the best games uh, ever made, especially of late. So, looks like it adds one more hero that can... A werewolf? Is that a werewolf? Lace and Pines? Looks like it. Looks like he can turn into a werewolf. Neat. Neat. I'm, I'm a sucker for unique classes. Then a hero deck, hero upgrade cards, threat deck, and lurker cards for this of so 60 cards in that. 15 minions, moon children, pack masters, and werewolves. No villain, huh? No villain. Interesting. I wonder why there's no villain in there. Um, so yeah, so that is... I mean, that's pretty much Alter Quest. I, I don't really have any... Uh... Any, it's not complaints, any uh, concerns uh, with this, except, um, I mean, because the gameplay seems super solid. I've watched watched a playthrough of it myself. It seems like it's going to be really cool, and, make, and you're going to have your own unique hero deck that makes you feel... Like, one of the things I thought was really, really cool was, like, the, the Hobbit character played a, a rope card that could attach to like a nearby obstacle and he attached attached it to a bookcase and it was able to swing him away just things like that like there's probably going to be a, uh, and not probably I know for a fact there's going to be a lot of stuff that's going to interact with these 3D terrains uh, which will make them feel fleshed out and make it feel kind of like a DM or D&D &D session which is what I'm wanting out of this game and really really good deck and card play uh, I don't know if the hero decks upgrade um, by like making your like getting better cards in them or anything like that. I don't think it's a deck builder of sorts. I think it's just about the modular decks. Um, so I mean, gameplay focuses on a game board depicting the darkest dungeons of the lands of Eridica. Players must use their chosen hero's unique deck to explore the mysterious rooms as they attempt to complete their chosen quest. As they open every door, the dungeon comes to life with feature miniatures depicting the scenery found in newly revealed chambers and enemy miniatures representing the lurking threats that oppose them. Of course, adventurers will, also, adventurers will also learn more about the world around them by discovering ancient secrets and artifacts and meeting a variety of characters that can either help or hurt them in their quest. Yeah, it seems like it's going to be a dungeon, uh, but not like a, a uh, uh, what do they call it, dungeon crawler. I mean, it is, but it's not going to be more about just, hey, just kill stuff and that's it. You're going to be doing a bunch of different quests and feel more about the world in Alter Quest. Uh, so, I mean, I think it's going to be really cool. I'm very much excited for it to come out. It looks like it's aiming for June of 2020. Uh, that, that seems to make sense. I think, my only, what I want out of it is, uh, they, they're already making an expansion, which is neat, but more villains would be really cool. Um, and, I mean, just more, just more content, and that's going to be one of these things. It's like, yeah, the modular thing is going to keep this alive uh, for quite some time, which is awesome. Uh, but I also think just having more variety to keep it alive that much longer would be a really, really neat, neat idea. And, of course, more 3D and more miniatures and more quests and just more, 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 because that's just the world we live in now. Um, but, yeah, that is... Uh, just my thoughts on Alter Quest. Um, let me know what you think of this Kickstarter game in the comments below. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching this, and if you like this video, then click the subscribe button below to enjoy any video that I put out. And right next to that subscribe button is a little bell. Click that so you get notified of whenever I actually upload these videos. If you want to support the channel, you can definitely visit my Patreon page. The link is in the description below. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.